Hello and welcome to Boxing in Your Face. My name is Joe Cortez, international boxing referee from Las Vegas, Nevada, the boxing capital of the world. Tonight we have none other than a legend, Tony DeMarco. Tony DeMarco, the former welterweight champion back in the year 1955. But we're going to let Tony tell you a little bit about his background. Tony, tell us a little bit about your fighting days. Uh, you got started in boxing what year? Well, my fighting days, I like to bring out the fact that I, it came from the boys' clubs. Okay. And I stress boys' clubs severely because it's, it's a great thing for, for America. It's a great thing for, for uh, children, for the boys and girls for that matter. Right. At one time it was strictly boys, but now they are, the girls finally get some recognition and it's important that we have more, as a matter of fact, boys' clubs. And that's where I started. And how does a man start? Well, you, you view, you see a, a pair of gloves in this particular case, or a basketball, and you play with it, and you 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 hoop it to the to the basket, and, and that's how you become a basketball player. But in my case, it was a pair of gloves. You picked up, you picked them up, you put them on, and they were fun. And my my uh, my friends did the same thing, and we. Slapped at each other, and and next thing you know, you got serious about it, right? And um, and that's how I started. Now you started. Now you turned pro. What year did you turn pro? Nineteen. Uh, let's see. Nineteen. Uh, just a minute now. Don't tell me. <laughs> I, I'm not telling you. Wait a minute. Nineteen forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-seven. 1947, you turned pro. Now you had a total of what, 58 world champ, world ta well, 58 professional fights. I fought uh, 71 professional fights. 71. Yes. Wow. And uh, I fought, and I would like to stress, I fought eight world champions, undisputed champions, <coughs> one time or another, not necessarily uh, then. Like we had, uh, we had one champion for each division. Right. And between my 14 years of professional fighting, I managed to fight eight world champions. Okay, now you, you started out as a, as a lightweight in the pros? I fought as a lightweight, I would say, um, yes, I would say that. As an amateur, I started as a featherweight. Okay. And I was 15 years old then. And then, then uh, the word was that I should turn pro because there was not, there wasn't any activities according to my handlers and the amateurs. Right. So I was very, I was game for anything, and I turned pro when I was 16 years old. 16 years old. And uh, I guess you had to falsify your birth certificate like that. Right? Well, in those days, we borrowed each other's birth certificate. And who's birth to the you Of course, Tony DeMarco was uh, from my corner, uh, which is Fleet Street, in the north end of Boston. And now, and, and let me just run a little bit ahead of it. It's called now Tony DeMarco Way. Oh, well, I see that probably. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. But, but uh, I, I borrowed Tony DeMarco's name, and, uh, and that's how I became Tony DeMarco. Was a box commissioner. What, what, what was your real name? My real name is Leonardo Liara. Leonardo Leonardo Liara. Liara. That's a movie star named Liara. No, Liara. Right. No relation. But, right. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, that's how I started uh, my career. And the funny part of it is, to go even further than that, Tony DeMarco who was from my corner, he decided he wanted to fight. So I said, well, I said, you're going to have to borrow someone's name because I had your name. <laughs> so I just go to the corner. And he borrowed someone's name, by the name of Tomini, and he decided to fight. Well, in those days, it was very, very common to do this. Right. And Michael Tomini, <laughs> the real Michael Tomini, already fought under his brother's name. <laughs> so there was three, followers, three guys from the same corner, and uh, here were fighting in the same names. 
And uh, it was, you never believe it. Uh, but in fact, they did a program, uh, a television program in Boston. They, they had the three of us uh, up against the car and, and interviewing us. And, and the uh, uh, interviewers who said, now you're Tony DeMarco, but you're not Tony DeMarco. And you're Tony, and who's off, who's off first and what's on second? Yes, yeah, so it, was, it was, was one of those. So it was one of those games like the real Tony exactly. DeMarco, will you please stand up? Well, that, yeah, so that, <laughs> you know, that's how I got started with, with, the, with the name. And I fought, uh, as, uh, I fought well, maybe 14 uh, amateurs. 14 amateur fights. I fought more park department fights than I fought amateur fights. Wow. Then they decided, to, you know how things go, they decided that I should, fight, should, should turn pro because I was good enough to turn pro. Right. I was knocking kids out uh, much older than I. You were, not, you were knocking men out, you were a kid. That's true. <laughs> That's right. And um, so, they, so, you know, I went along, I went along with it. Uh, and I became a professional fighter, and uh, and, uh, and you know, and, and that's basically it. Okay, but okay. Now you won the you won the welterweight championship, and when there was only one sanctioning fight, there were only world, eight world champions eight total. World champion, so. Okay, and now you beat Johnny Saxon for the welterweight championship in 1955. 1955. Okay, yes. then and who was your next opponent after that? Well, let me preface this by saying. Before that fight, there was a, an understanding between managers in those days, whether it be Ricky Palermo or whatever it might be, uh, and, and not only managers, but guys that were involved in the fight game. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the commissions in, uh, uh, in New York at the time. I can't, I can't recall the commission, but, but anyway, between New York and Boston, uh, it was a question of fighting Johnny. First of all, Johnny Johnny Saxon beat Kid Gavilan, who was a, you know a great fighter. He was a decent fighter from Cuba. And exactly. And he had, he had a great ball of punch. He had the ball of punch. I fought him. Yeah, how many ball of punches did he hit you with? Well, he started the ball of punch and I had him a left hook. And you put him away. And no, I didn't put him away. But he beat him. But he stopped on the ball of punch I, after that. Kid Gavilan was a very good fighter and very. Difficult to hurt, right? You know, uh, he knew his style. But but getting back to the fight, so so finally, uh, the manager decided on some ruling that one of us, Basilio or, or myself, fight Johnny Saxon, with the understanding that the winner fights. Uh, Carmen Basilio. Carmen Basilio. Well, it's okay with me. You know, Carmen, Carmen was, in, they didn't expect that much from Carmen to begin with. The old Carmen Basilio here with yourself. Yeah. And he's, he's my buddy now. now. Yeah? I have to say that because if I don't, he could probably slap me around. No, yeah. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Carmen Basilio is, is a, a great, great guy. Man. He's a great guy. He's a great friend of mine. And, uh, and but so I fought Kitty Avalon with the understanding of like, to fight Basilio. Of course, the only thing I re regret professionally that I fought Carmen with in the 71 days, or 70, 71 days. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't have a chance to heal myself. Exactly. You know, because I, I fought Johnny Saxton, I knocked him out in the 14th round. Right. I, I, uh, I hit him throughout the 14th round, and then I, in the 14th round, I, I hit him right cross, and and I, I never broke my hand, but I hurt my hand a little bit. And when he got up from the canvas, I hit him 24 consecutive punches. And they stopped the fight? They finally stopped the fight. They finally stopped it. And, and he was just limbo. He couldn't move. He was just up there with his hands down. And I'm, and I'm hoping, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the fight would stop. Because he was getting hurt, right. and I was hitting left hooks after left hooks after left hooks, and hitting him consecutively. Now, would you say that your left hook was your best punch? I would say that. I would say that. I would say, I, you know, I, you, we all brag about it, about one another because, <laughs> but I was a good puncher, 
Nine. Well, you have 33 knockouts and uh, 30, 58 wins. 58 wins. Yeah, 33 knockouts. That, that, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good record. Right that's yeah. a, that, that's a, a good, good percentage of uh, knockouts. That's a good percentage, yeah. That means that you're decent. I don't want to get hit by you today. Never mind yeah. back in those days. I don't want to hit you either. Come on, man. I went the way I did. I got to move back, you know. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, here we are talking about that great Tony DeMarco. Tony DeMarco yeah. really is a, is a legend in boxing, and, and Tony is a. Is the things, the stories he's been talking to me about all day today, I said, Tony, we got to come on the show, boxing in your face, and talk a little bit about your past history because uh, you have your beautiful wife, uh, Dorothy, who's here with you in Las Vegas. And uh, are you celebrating your second honeymoon or what's going on? Well, we're still, we're still celebrating our first honeymoon. Oh, your first? Yeah. Really? We're going to marry in May. In May of so we're, last year. Well, so we're just, you know, could have reached uh, 12 months before we can okay, so, so relax you, and go on vacation. No, so, so, so actually, you really still got a little spark of the old flash. Well, I, I should hope so. I mean, I'm a man, you know. I'm not as old as you are. Yeah, well, you know, Tony, <laughs> going back to uh, to your boxing, uh, I mean, you have great stories with the fights that, the fight that you had. And uh, what can you tell our, our viewers out there about the fighters back in the days when you were fighting and as compared to the fighters that we have today, what's your personal opinion? Well, my personal opinion is that uh, we had some good good fighters, but you know, I grew up with the fight game. And I remember people saying to me, the old timers were the good fighters, not you guys. <laughs> you guys, you know, you are right. You know, I mean, you know, these guys like you and Johnny Saxton and uh, Sugar Ray Ralph, of course, Sugar, Sugar Ray Ralph was the exceptional. He was an exception. He was an exception. He was, he was really and Sugar exceptional. Ray Robinson and, Cat, and Joe Lewis and Willie Pep, these are the exceptionals. But beside them, they would say, the old times, they would, you know, and, and uh, I'm not going to carry that today. I'm not going to I'm not going to say we're better than Duran, we're better than uh, Hollyfield, we're better, you know, this is nonsense. There, there, everybody was good in their and, era. Everybody was good in their era, and, they, and if the, the guys today, and I'm not even speaking of uh, 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 champions, undis, uh, undisputed champions, because there were right. many champions today in different, in different divisions, right. in different areas. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta consider them. You gotta, you can't say we were better no, no, because it's not. hard to say that. No, no they're, 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 it's, they're, it's not fair to say that. No, no, you know, you're it's right. not fair to them. Well, you and know, it was, it wasn't fair to us when we had to step back from Tony Cantor Henry, uh, Henry Armstrong was it? Yeah, Henry Armstrong was it? Was it was a three times. He, he had three I mean, championships. They can go back to John L. Sullivan. <laughs> You know. They're great fighters. They're fighters in every era are great fighters, and you were in the era where they had a lot of outstanding champions. But then, going back to the, talking about outstanding champions, when Tony DeMarco was a fighter, a champion, there were only eight champions in the world. That's Total. True. That was it. That's true. Today we have about 50 some odd world yes, champions. Yes, but it's unfair to them. <laughs> it's unfair to them to they take him, not recognize being the, the undisputed champion. Yeah. And I and I say that we should have, frankly. Uh, and we tried, we tried this once in Boston, when Rocky Marciano was around, we had a, a boxing czar that would, that, that would uh, organize all boxing uh, uh, states right. and have one champion, you know, right. one champion, and, but uh, they never materialized. Right. And now we have, uh, of course money's made, money's being made, yeah. but we're talking about, not money, we're talking about a sport. And that's important. Well, you know, talking about money being made, I remember back in the days with Willie Mays, uh, yeah, right. Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams, Excuse those me. great guys. Great. They were great ball players. Great and ball. you know what? They were signing up for a contract for the year, $50,000. That was it. They were lucky they saw $100,000. $100,000. Unbelievable. unbelievable. To, today, they won't do a commercial for less than $100,000. Unbelievable. You know? Today, a hundred. And, to come, and, and, the fight, right. and the fight is today. For, for an appearance you make, you're making $400,000. Exactly. Today. Back in the old days, uh, you, you got uh, 
there was a battle, I was watching a show on TV the other day, yes. they had Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle, they had a, a, a home run series just with two players, and the winner will win $500. And I was watching that on Classics the other day, and I said, wow, you know, how times have changed. And I know Willie Mays personally, and I've been with, with the great Joe DiMaggio back in, uh, after he retired, of course, and we spent some days together when we were at the Uncle Kissinger Hotel uh, doing a celebrity golf tournament. I got to meet a lot of these players, and they were telling me, Joe, they, they were saying, it's unfair. The money that these guys are making today compared to the money we made back then, but, you know, Times change. And it's it's changed. It's no time. fields. No, you know, well, baseball is a very uh, good indication of what we're talking about. Right. You know? Well, Tony, you know, I just want to tell our fans today that it was really, really an honor having you on our show because having a, a legend like you on boxing in your face, that is really a treat, not only for boxing in your face, but for the fans out there as well. Tony, I want to thank well, you so much. Say, thank and you, and I appreciate your 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 program here and I think it's a great one and I think it's going to be very successful and very nice. It's going to be a knockout. It is a knockout. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to go to none other than Nick Balafato who talked to you about his views on boxing today. Take it away, Nick. <laughs> 